Welcome to Vision 2024. I'd like to start off by thanking the entire staff, board members, Sunday school teachers, small group leaders, child care providers, and the numerous amount of volunteers that have worked effortlessly in front and behind the scenes over this last year. I want to thank you. I want to thank those who stepped out in faith and financially supported the church's efforts this year. I also want to thank our office staff who have worked tirelessly as well behind the scenes, pulling out their hair, trying to figure out how in the world to make my credit card budget work. Only Ron would laugh at that one. But I do want to thank you. I want to thank you as a congregation. I really do get to pastor the best church on the planet. You're amazing. I, I get to brag about you all the time and all my travels and, and explain how this church is different, unlike any church I've ever been in before. And, and to me, that is so cool that, that we have such a diverse amount of people. And a diverse doesn't mean just your ethnic background, but even your, your vocation, what you do, where you're from, how you've moved from one state to another, the families that have been in this church for generations and it, it, it's amazing. This church probably might be the most diverse church on the planet when you look around. And you may be thinking, well, we're not a mega church. We're not, but you're mega people. You have some of the greatest hearts. You have some amazing stories that we share with, and we get to know each other over meals and different ministries. It has been beyond a blessing to serve you this last year. It says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Uh, uh, just after Pentecost happens, something amazing uh, is said, and it says this. In the last days, now I don't know about you, but Stan and I have these talks. I'm usually not a last days person, but this last year has really been interesting, hasn't it? I'm finally to the point, and I'm like, Lord, go ahead. Come on, Right? But it says this, in the last days, God says, not Brad, not anyone else, not even Pastor Roy, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. How's your spirit? You know what I said a minute ago, I, I love watching you love each other. I, I love seeing how you encourage each other, even when you come to me broken, bruised, or whatever, you have a spirit about you. You are so loving. Even in the midst of pain, I have yet to see such loving people genuinely care for each other. But it goes on and says this, your sons and daughters, we're all sons and daughters of somebody, right? Nobody was born in a test tube? Okay, so this means all of us, right? Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men, that's Uncle Roy again. Your old men will dream dreams. Here's what it is. Luke is telling us. God is about to do something amazing. When the world seems to be falling apart, and it sure seems to be falling apart, doesn't it? When the world seems to be chaos, full of sin, justifying abominations, when all seems lost, God's about to do something amazing. We will see visions and we will have dreams. Amen? And it's important for a church to have a vision. It's important for you to have a vision. Matter of fact, it even says this in Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. See, you think about that and it's so true. Think about those who who take their own lives. Usually when you get to that place where you can't see anything in your future, that's when we usually work to perish. The Bible is always 
accurate. The Bible is always true. And it's always important for you and I to have a vision. And think about it for our kids. We tell our kids, you need to have a goal. What's your goal in life? And we usually have this talk with them when they're in high school, whether they're going to go to college or the military or some vocation. And we're like, what are you going to do? And they have to, I don't know what I want to do. And, and we encourage them, don't we? If we're good parents, to have a vision. And a lot of times I ask people, I'm like, if you could do anything, money's not an option. What would you do? I'm 55, I'm about to turn 56, and I'm thinking the same thing still. What do I want to do this year? Have you ever thought about that? The visions are not just for kids about to leave home in high school. We're to have a fresh vision all the time. So we tell our kids, have a goal. Church, have a goal. Have a vision. Prophesy. In other words, speak life into it. You do realize, I, I posted this week, that the tongue is the most powerful muscle in the world, so use that muscle to lift each other up. But we need to use it to lift ourselves up. There is power in our words. The Bible talks about speak life or death. What are you speaking? Over this last year, we've talked about different mental disorders. A mental disorder doesn't mean crazy anxiety and depression and all these different things and and so many times satan loves to tell us the negatives about ourselves well we need to start to claim the identity that which jesus christ died for you that you are the sons and daughters of the most high king you need to believe in yourself and speak to yourself and that thing of which you want to accomplish believe you can do it and no this is not a joel olstein sermon i promise you Jokes are falling low this morning, folks. Listen, if you're visiting with us today, that's as funny as I get. Other than that, just church sarcasm. But listen, a church is to have a biblical vision. Throughout scriptures, we read God given men and women vision for the future to bring about glory in the building of the kingdom. And our ability to see is only partially strengthened by our eyes. The greatest strength of our vision is comes from our spirit within that we begin to believe in who God created us to be and that the word says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us do you believe that we say amen but church do you really believe that do you really believe you can accomplish all things even in the things you're struggling with even in the things that are wearing you down, making you cry, giving you a defeated mentality. Do you really believe that God can overcome those in your life just as Jesus Christ overcame the grave? So your vision is not in your eyes. It's in your spirit. It is in who God created you to believe, who to be and to believe who you are, amen? So the question is, do we believe that God has a vision for ourselves? For you as an individual, do you think God is done with you? Or do you think God is about to do something great through you? I pray you learn to see that God is using you no matter what. You know, as Pastor Roy got up here and said, he's the oldest person on staff. I wasn't going to point it out, but since you did. But I was raised to respect my elders. I, I love the fact that I grew up on a farm. Then went to the military. I, I've always learned to have respect for my elders. And when I use the term sir and ma'am, it's not age. It's respect. Tracking with me? And so when Pastor Roy, four years. You two been married for four years. That's shocking. I remember when they were dating at McDonald's. They're retired. They're on a budget. Um, yeah. But I, I promise to pay Roy every year, one dollar. Four years, I've not given him a dime yet. The nice thing about his age, he forgets. So we just feed him with donuts. But church, there's a vision for Pastor Roy. He's been so vital in our ministry here. I can't do everything, and I try not to do everything, 
And the more I try to do, the more I try to mess up stuff. And so it's important that no matter your age, whether you're young or old, God has a vision for you. Even J.J. sang last week, 16 years old up here singing, what a voice, absolutely what a voice. Pastor Jeannie, Jeannie, Gina, what, <laughs> apparently you got a new name today, uh, with our children. Church, we all should have a vision in our personal lives, in our spiritual lives. So with that, my other question is this. Do you believe that God has a vision for our church this year? Without one, we perish. There are over 2,900 churches closing their doors every month here in America. There are over 3,500 pastors walking away from ministry every month here in America now. We might be in the last days. We just might be. But the good news is, it's not the last days of God. I still firmly believe that people are seeking God and the kingdom of God every day. Just this past week, I got to share the gospel with three individuals and pray with two of them. And had a, a wonderful dinner the other night and shared with more people God who had no idea who God is. Uh, we live in a generation where Christianity is falling away in our country. But I'm finding more and more people who want to hear about God and Jesus. Church, I have a vision. I really do. For myself, for this church, and for the kingdom of God. And you may be thinking, Brad, what is, what is all this about today? If you're visiting with us today, this is our vision day. It used to be in the evening, but we do it during the day. It's also known as our annual meeting. There's something wonderful about the Nazarene church that I love. We are a democracy. The church belongs to you. And so one Sunday a year, we give reports from department heads where we are, what we're doing. Do you realize that we are a 501c3? We're a nonprofit organization. Legally, we are to be having this meeting. We also vote today for board members. Do you realize to have a 501c3, you have to have uh, board members or, or stakeholders or shareholders? We have those. Many churches, you hear, never hear about membership. Here we do. Do you know why? Because you govern the church. You decide where we go. That's the important things. In a lot of churches, the only people who make the real decision would be the pastor and his family. So even when they say they don't have members, to have a 501c3, you must have members. You must have monthly meetings and annual meetings. Here we're very transparent. We want that to be you. If you're a member, you get to vote on board members. Being a board member is vitally important. It's the lifeblood of our church. Matter of fact, if God took me home today, and I'm okay if he did, he probably won't, um, but if he does, if you're a member, you get to decide who your next pastor is. Did you realize that? You have a say-so in this church. This church is not ran by myself and our teams. It's ran by God and his spirit and by all people who call this church home. So that's what this day is really about, is our annual meeting, letting you know where we are, what we're doing. Each person got up, told you what they've done over this last year and what they're going to do, because we want you to be included in the future plans of this church. Amen? So with that, let me uh, point out a few things. What is vital for Long Beach First Church this next year? I would say it's two things. One, salvation. A church exists for the salvation of everyone through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The church is not supposed to be here for entertainment or anything else. And while sometimes people's jokes are entertaining, mine's not, there is that. But salvation is first and foremost. Church, if we ever forget why we exist, we will fail. The church is here for salvation, to bring the good news of Jesus Christ into a lost and broken world. That's a good place for an amen. Amen? amen. amen. The second thing that I believe God has a vision for here in this church is salvation and for maturing the saints, a.k.a. you. I'm not saying many of you are immature. No, I'm kidding. But we are here. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we have 
the midweek service. And again, I want to touch on the midweek service that just started, started this past week. It, it's in English. It's not Tagalog. Um, there is worship. We want to encourage you, no matter where you're from or your race or creed, invite you here Wednesday night for the 7 o'clock service. It's a great service. But we are here to mature you, to bring you and help you walk closer to God and remind you in the midst of craziness that God loves you. The truth of it is that world outside these doors, it's hard. It's brutal. It can tear you down. There's a reason why the Apostle Paul says, do not forsake the assembly. And so church, we don't want to forsake that. So come on Sunday mornings and Sunday school and for church and Wednesday nights and different ministries because we want to help you draw closer to Christ. Some of the things that's been done over this past year, I don't know if you've been on the school property to look what has been done there has been absolutely transformational and amazing through the hard work of Kat and Miss Cherry and Brett. And I just want to give you guys a hand for that. Uh, one of the other things done, if you have been in the fellowship hall, you realize we finally have real light switches in there now. You no longer have to break into Pastor Oni's office and flip a giant breaker where you're afraid to get electrocuted. There are now push buttons on the wall that you can push and have it done. The entire fellowship hall has been remodeled over this past year, freshly painted, new lights. It looks absolutely wonderful. One of the things we just did was a mental health conference. Before that, we did a spiritual gift conference. After that was parenting seminars. If you realize one of the things with these conferences is to sometimes people need another reason behind faith to step into God's church. We've realized that mental health, and there's a mental health crisis in our nation, that we as a church, we should be helping. Because the truth of it is, Help in mental illness is not always Prozac, but it's always God. And we want to remind people, if you are struggling with anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, or whatever it is, God is there for you. Amen? So you may be thinking, Brad, what's the goals for this year? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a house in my neighborhood. I've lived there eight and a half years now. That is the ugliest house in our neighborhood. It's atrociously ugly. It's, it's mustard yellow. It's dirty. I mean, it's worth millions, right? A trailer park here in Southern California is worth a million. It's worth a lot of money. It's huge. It's the biggest, ugliest house in the neighborhood. It really is. I went into it a couple months ago. It's beautiful inside. I would have never noticed that. On the outside, it looks like it needs tore down. Last month, they painted it. It looks absolutely beautiful. Right? No matter how beautiful the inside of a house is, most people will not get past the outside. The same is true for God's house. We have spent the last eight plus years remodeling the inside it's absolutely beautiful I know Tony said he was giving the people a tour yesterday this is beautiful but church I'm going to let you know the outside does not look good it just doesn't I mean just outside this door there's an ugly rotted beam that's been propped up with other wood and there's not much we can do about it but we need to begin to fix the outside of God's church I, I want to let you know the psychology of people. If somebody walks up and looks at the outside of our church and sees it's not well cared for, psychologically they will realize we probably will not care for them either. So many times in church we think like church people and we forget what lost people think. And they're going to judge us on everything, aren't they? They really are. They're going to judge us, see if we're judging them, which they became the first judge, but they missed that point. They will judge us on my appearance, how we preach, the music, everything. But I will tell you, the first judgment will be on the outside of our building. The outside of the building looks really bad, to be honest. And God's house should look better than our own personal houses. 
And so this year we're going to make our vision goal very simple, to take care of the outside of our building. The first thing we need to do is termite control. You realize both these buildings are absolutely infested with termites? And if you look up, there are giant wooden beams right above your heads. We might want to take care of that. We don't want the beams coming down on you, amen? Speaking of the beams, we do. The beams outside are rotted all the way around. We need to take care of those. Get them fixed, get them painted, get them cleaned up. After that, we need to paint the church, the outside. So many times we park really close and we don't get a bird's eye view. And it's kind of like having an old dog. I don't know if anybody has an old dog. You remember when you got that dog, it was small and fluffy and pretty and it, it was wonderful and it was great and it finally matured and, and quit wetting itself in your house and all these things. And it became the perfect dog and you love that dog. Again, I'm a farm boy. It's the only analogy I got today. You ever notice all of a sudden, one day all of a sudden that dog got really old? You finally noticed all the gray hair around the mouth, how much weight it's lost, but you never saw it coming. So many times we're so used to seeing our church building, we're not seeing it age. This church building was built in 1960. There's a little plaque on the outside of the door over there. This dog's got some gray hair. It's got a little thin. And so last year, I had different companies come and give us bids to paint God's house. With the bid, they also found a lot of the wood on the outside, especially around the Fellowship Hall, is rotted away from termites and water. This is a great church. It's beautiful on the outside. It's time we take care of the outside too. Amen? And so this year's vision is to take care of the outside of God's house. To let people know, not only is the inside beautiful with you, but the outside's beautiful as well. We are the caretakers of God's house. We have a responsibility to do that. And so this year's goal is $100,000. I had people give me a bid of over 100000 just to paint it. That's just a paint. That's not taking care of the rotted beams or the termites or anything else but I've been known to be a shrewd negotiator. So I'm setting the goal at $100,000. I, I think you were all given pledge cards as you came in. Um, pray about it. Maybe you already have, maybe you've filled it out. The truth of it is, probably somebody in here or watching online could write a check for $100,000 right now and we're just done with it. No, I'm serious. I, I believe in things like that. I, I believe God can do amazing things. Somebody could probably write a check for 50000 or 25000 or maybe your check is $25. Leave that between you and God, would you? I'm going to tell you now, I don't look at your pledge cards. I care more about your relationship with God than what you're pledging. But I just ask, be faithful. Be faithful, be fruitful with what you can do, and pray about it and turn it in. At the end of this year, I would love to be standing up here next year as we brag about what God has done through us. And the outside of God's church is beautiful. Throughout the course of this entire time, just realize myself and all the teams I listed before, we will be doing everything we can to fill the pews. Because I still believe people are seeking God. They really are. And I get to have these conversations the entire time. Matter of fact, one of the things we've been working on is starting a Cambodian ministry with Sidori and Vanny. Yesterday morning, one of the people I met at the gym, um, she had brought her two sons here with Tony. There are about 12 people that are Cambodian that I minister to almost every night at the gym. We will be getting a new Cambodian ministry started. Not only will we take care of the outside, but the inside. I'd also like to see a new Spanish ministry started here this next year as well to continue to add to God's people. Amen? Amen. Listen, I'm going to pray for us this morning, and as I pray, would you just hold your pledge cards and pray for them? And if you're watching online, you may have not gotten a pledge card, but there's a link um, there on our Facebook where you can give. If you're on our app, 
you can go to push pay and it will automatically um, pay every week every month or whatever you want to do however you want to give but let me pray would you just intentionally pray about what God would have you committed to do this year to be part of God's if you did not get a pledge card would you raise your hand Miss Cherry will bring you one we'll wait till you have one to pray I was looking at my investments this week. There's still more hands up on this side. And I was looking at all the digital currency and all the things you can invest in. And it made me think about how much do we invest in the future of our church. Many of you were raised here. You've been here for a long time. Let's make sure this church is here for the next generation and the next, and the next. And this not be one of the churches that closes its doors in the coming months. I promise you I'm not leaving ministry. I'm here. Amen? Let's make sure God's church is here too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we love you. We thank you. Lord, as we think about the coming year here at our church, Lord, would you remind us that we are more than just members of this church. We are all the caretakers. We have a responsibility to remind people in this community there is a holiness church that will love them, that will encourage them, that they can come to no matter where they are in their life and that you're such a great God, you won't leave us where you find us. You will clean us up and love us. And Lord, we know you've done it for us and so many, but Lord, would you do it for many more? And not only for this generation, but the generations to come. Lord, this church was started in 1904. And Lord, it needs to go until you come back. So Lord, allow us to be partners with you in your ministry. Lord, speak to us of how we pledge, what we do, how we do it. And Lord, most of all, we ask that you reveal yourself in our personal lives through a vision and through this church and the vision of this next year and the greatness of who you are through it all. In Jesus' name, amen.